Hello, kindergarten, first graders, second graders, and third graders. It's Mrs. Hilliard here in Occupational Therapy, and I'm here to show you what we're going to be doing for the week of April 26th in OT. We're going to get started. I have my three bins to create a definite endpoint to each task and help with transitions and also to keep things organized. So we are going to start with our hand warm-up in bin number one. I have something new for you today. You will need a cup or a bowl. Markers, a lot of markers. Every marker in your marker box, at least 10. And from your kitchen, some salad tongs, spring loaded um, if you have them, um, or something like this. And we're gonna practice using a stabilizing hand to hold the cup and use those open and close patterns of the hand and the radial side of the hand that we also use for writing and cutting to pick up those markers and put them in the bowl. So we're gonna start. And you can kind of watch how that brings that wrist into extension when you have to do this. And that is something that we really work on in OT is strengthening those wrist extensors for cutting and writing. So very carefully, you're gonna reach. You can also work on that reaching across the visual midline. So grab those markers carefully and put them into the cup. Now, if this is too easy for you, you can get some popsicle sticks or something smaller to pick up and put them into the cup. But I like the idea of them being something long and skinny like a marker or a popsicle stick because you really have to throw your wrist into extension to get them into the cup. So we're all done with our warm up, and we're gonna move on to bin number two. So today in OT, we're gonna make a butterfly. So we get to practice folding our paper and cutting out a complex shape um, and drawing a complex shape. We're gonna draw a heart and also um, position in space to place the hearts and drawing those small circles, working on that distal finger control again and coloring them in. So you will need a background paper. I chose blue for a blue sky, a scrap of black paper for the butterfly's body, and then any two colors for the butterfly wings. You also need your scissors, markers, and glue, and maybe a white crayon if you have it. So we're gonna start off making our butterfly wings. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna practice holding our paper in half. And this is something we always like to work on in OT, lining up those corners. So it will look like you have a card. Now we're gonna learn how to draw a heart. So grab a marker and we're gonna draw a heart, but you wanna make sure that it's medium sized, not too big, not too small. So I drew a half of a heart. And I'm gonna go back up to the top and draw the other half of a heart. So you have a heart on one of these pieces of paper and now you're gonna do that same thing again on the second color of your butterfly's wings. So go ahead and practice folding again. You're holding your paper long ways. Bring the bottom corners up to the top, match them up, and push down to make a crease. Now we're gonna draw that heart again. So draw that half curve and go up to the top. Draw the other half of the curve. And now you have two hearts. Keeping your paper folded, I want you to grab your scissors and practice cutting out that heart by staying on the line. And remember, keep turning the paper to get around the tight edges and stay on the line. So you'll have two hearts in one color and then you'll have two in the other. So we're gonna cut out the other heart. Your time, don't rush. Try to get the tight corner. And the two yellow hearts. Right, we're going to fold those hearts in half. So fold them in half. Again, we practice folding. We fold again. We 
fold again and fold again. So you have four folded hearts. Now grab your background color paper and your black scrap. And if you have a white crayon in your bin, that is helpful when using black paper. We're gonna make our butterfly's body. So you're just gonna draw a straight line down. We're gonna cut on the line. Make sure you pick your scissors up the right way. Thumbs in the little hole and cut straight up on that line. Grab your glue stick. And you're gonna glue your butterfly's body in the middle of the page. So we're gonna take our glue and make a stripe of glue down in the middle and press our butterfly's body on to the background color. And then we're gonna take our two hearts. So the first two hearts, we're gonna glue, put them down first to make sure you have a good position. But we're gonna glue them on like this. So you can see they look like butterfly wings. And we're gonna keep them folded. Go ahead and put glue down and press your top butterfly wings on. like this when you're done. You want to make sure it sticks too. I did not do a good job pushing down and making it stick. All right, and then you're going to grab your other two hearts and we're going to put those on our butterfly upside down so they look like bottom butterfly wings. So practice putting them down first before you put the glue down. that mistake earlier today so it's always good to put your wings down first make sure they look right and then glue them and then you have a beautiful butterfly so we're gonna add some spots and we're gonna distal finger control and marker grasp so grab any color marker you want and we're gonna make three small circles on each wing And then we'll do it on the bottom. One, two, three, on the other side. Now, for some of you uh, who are working on coloring and boundaries, make sure you're holding the marker the right way to color and boundaries. It's very difficult to color in the lines if you are using a gross marker grasp. So pinch your marker and try to color in the lines. And we did this last week, we worked on distal finger control and I wanna keep building that skill, so this is great. And don't forget to put your name on your work when you're all done. Made a beautiful spring butterfly, good job guys. We're gonna move on to the writing piece of our session. And I found another poem online to practice writing. So get your high rate paper out if you have your highlighted line paper. Um, or a piece of lined paper or your whiteboard. And you're gonna practice copying a few of these sentences uh, in your best writing. Don't forget your spacing between the words and keeping your letters on the line. So I'll read this to you first. Caterpillar garden. Over in the garden under a tree, I saw some fuzzy caterpillars. One, two, three. Over in the garden under the moon, each caterpillar spun herself a cocoon. Over in the garden, right before my eyes, those caterpillars all turned into butterflies. So I'm gonna hold this up so you can copy it in your best writing. And go ahead and take some time to do that. You can always pause the screen. And I will also send this in an attachment so a grown up can print it out. And you can have it right in front of you for writing.
All right, if you need more time, pause the screen. We're going to move on to bin number three, and we're bringing back shoe time. So I have a practice shoe here, and this is something that you can do for students who are just starting out learning to tie shoes. I use two colors and tie them together at the bottom so that I have two colored laces for better visibility to learn to tie. And you can see I anchored my laces inside to make two bunny ears. So we have those anchors already in. We're gonna pull our bunny ears up, pinch them in the middle, make an X, save a space, save that space, take the lace that is closer to your body, push it down through the tunnel, pinch and pull, bring your laces back up, make an X, take the lace that's closer to you, push it down through the tunnel, pinch and pull. And that's an adaptive shoe tying method. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you in our live session.